Hello Birminghamers! This is Birmingham Shocking True Tales and I'm Donna Cassicelli coming to you on this day August 19th 1883 and boy what a Sunday it's been already! We're reporting from the eccentric, a desperate encounter, which happened very early this morning, right on Saginaw Street. Some of you might know it as Woodward Avenue. A burglar attempted to rob Mr. Poppleton's store, but that attempt was foiled when Mrs. Mitchell's was woken up to her dog's warning bark. She woke her husband, who went to the residence of Edgar Poppleton to warn him of the burglary. Edgar hastily threw on some clothes and woke his father-in-law, Mr. Cooper, and they went to investigate. Now, when the men realized that the burglar was still in the store, they decided to lay and wait for him to exit. And according to the Birmingham eccentric, when the burglar was seen at the window with the most praiseworthy motive in the world of giving a fellow creature a chance at life, Mr. Poppleton's voice rang out clear and distinct in the night air as he drew his revolver on the man, HALT AND HOLD UP YOUR HANDS! Now this nearly cost Mr. Poppleton his life, for he heard the click of a revolver and the burglar fired his weapon! Mr. Poppleton felt a bullet plow along his skull, as he says, and at the same time he fired back. Now, the eccentric then describes the life and death struggle as the two men fought on the ground when Mr. Cooper was able to grasp the man by the throat, where they too fell on the ground struggling. After another warning to stop, Mr. Poppleton fired the last shot in his revolver and the burglar went still. Now, Mr. Poppleton was able to walk away, but he was covered in blood. And according to accounts, Mrs. Poppleton was overcome by the sight and fainted. Thankfully, strong arms assisted her back to the house. Now, Mr. Poppleton's wounds bled profusely all morning, but they were not deemed dangerous, and even though he has lost hearing in his left ear, the bullet only glanced off his skull. Now, the burglar was carried to the National Hotel this morning, where he persisted on living for several more hours, none of which he gave up his name. However, after his death, he was identified as the professional burglar, James P. Kennedy. His young wife of only four months has just claimed his body and removed it to Detroit for burial. Now, thankfully, a Mr. Brumette of Pontiac was able to, quote, get a most excellent picture of Kennedy with his wounds. Now, many folks at Birmingham, I know you were able to go and visit the body at the National or even scout for souvenirs at the site of Poppleton's, but if you didn't make it out this morning, no worries. As it advertised in the eccentric, right next to the full account of this story, I can tell you, quote, photographs of the dead burglar with a concise statement of the affair printed on the back is for sale at Whitehead and Mitchell's. So Birminghamers, get over to Whitehead and Mitchell's and get your picture of this burglar because it's sure to be a keepsake. This is Donna coming to you from the Birmingham Museum.